Hi, my name is Joe Downer. I'm the Archaeological Field Research Manager here at George Washington's Mount Vernon, and I'm going to talk to you about some of the things that we find whenever we do archaeology here on site. Mount Vernon has been continuously occupied for a few thousand years, um, considering our, we have a large uh, collection of Native American artifacts. Uh, we have stuff from the Washington period, and then we have artifacts dating all the way up until yesterday. Uh, so it's stuff that visitors have dropped uh, when they've come to, to visit the estate. Um, so whenever we do archaeology and stick a shovel in the ground, artifacts are going to come out. And so it's very important for us to record exactly where those artifacts are coming from. Um, it's called context. And an artifact without context is just a cool thing, but we can't really know much more about it beyond that. So that's why the context is so important. So right here we've got some artifacts that we pulled out of the ground uh, just a couple of days ago. And all of that context information is written in this bag, and then the artifacts are put in this bag. Now, I've laid them out right here just so you can see what they look like when they first come in from the field. You can see um, we got some cool pieces of ceramic here, but they're all caked in dirt and mud. Uh, this is a nail. It looks kind of like a, a nasty Cheeto. Um, and so this is what the artifacts look like when they first come in. And so before we can really analyze them, the first thing we have to do is wash them. And so that... Uh, results in this right here. These are some artifacts that we washed a few days ago, currently on the drying rack uh, from the, the South Lane site that we're currently working on. And so you can see the dirt's gone. Um, we always let these dry for at least three days to make sure that um, there's no moisture. Um, and then from this point, we're able to begin uh, cataloging, labeling, bagging, and storing, and in some cases, assembling these things back together. Um, and so whenever we're doing archaeology, like I said, there's a lot of, um, uh, there's a, a wide range of occupation here at Mount Vernon. And so we, we find stuff from Native Americans and we've got some of those artifacts out here. This is a, an ax head that we uncovered in our excavation in the African American cemetery just a few years ago. Um, this was very cool to find. And then you can see, we've also got, this is another one. This is called a celt. And uh, you can really see that nice, sharp, smooth edge right there. So that would have been ground down uh, to make that nice, sharp edge. Here we have a projectile point. And here's a couple of different kinds. And then over here, we've got a little bit of an example of Native American pottery decorated with a corn cob. And they just roll it on there. And so you get that, uh, that neat design there. So. Obviously we find stuff from the Washington period as well. And so you can see some of that <clears throat> laid out on the table right here. Really every single artifact of the Washington period would have been touched by enslaved hands. Uh, so whenever we see these, these plates, these nice pieces of China um, or ceramic, yeah, we think about their, their design and we think about their um, context and what that means for you know, social status at the time. But we also think about the people that are handling these the most, and that's gonna be the enslaved cooks uh, the, the house servants, uh, etc. And so, uh, every element of this table here, uh, has something to do with slavery at Mount Vernon. Uh, this is called colono ware right here. And this is just heated clay pretty much. And so this is something that the enslaved population would have been making for their own use, most likely sometimes probably used in the kitchen as well. But this stuff would have been made by folks that were recently brought over from Africa or just one or two generations removed and have learned it from from those folks. So uh, there's a lot of different cultural things happening here. Um, you can also see some of the, the glassware, the table glass we have. Um, these are always pretty exciting. There's an air bubble inside of that. So encased in there is uh, 18th century air, which I always get a kick out of. Right here, we've got some uh, wine bottle seals. These are often uh, very cool to find. And so a wine bottle seal is pretty much a glob of glass that they would affix to their wine bottle and then stamp their insignia into it. And so if you were pretty wealthy in the 18th century uh, and consumed a lot of wine, you, you typically had your own seal. And so we'll find those seals. They tend to hold up pretty well because they're so thick, whereas the rest of the bottle is broken away. And so this is a seal for Daniel Park Custis, uh, which is pretty awesome. And then this one even has a date on it. This is John Custis dated 1713. And Custis, of course, is uh, Martha Washington. That was her first, first husband. And so we're finding Custis wine here in Mount Vernon, which means she's bringing a lot of that stuff with her into that marriage. 
We've got a few more assembled ceramics. So over here, we saw what they look like when they first come out of the ground and when they're cleaned. And then oftentimes we're able to actually piece together some of these things. And so this is a, a ceramic called Staffordshire Slipware. And you can see, especially if you look inside, when we found this in the field, it was tons and tons of different little pieces. And it went through this process of being washed, dried, uh, labeled and cataloged, and then we were able to actually assemble most of this back together again. And so this is a pretty impressive um, piece of ceramic. So I do want to point this out. This is a, a shackle that we found, um, which is obviously a very visceral reminder of slavery here at Mount Vernon. And so this is something that we always try to, to point out um, so that we can continue to tell those stories uh, of the people that were here, not just the Washingtons, but everybody. Uh, one of my favorite things in terms of artifacts at Mount Vernon, and this is just me personally, if you asked uh, Jason or Tom, uh, otherwise we all have our own specialties, but I actually love finding uh, the, art, the artifacts of tourism, so to speak. And so Mount Vernon has been a national shrine for generations. And so people have been coming here and visiting here for hundreds of years, uh, even during Washington's lifetime. Um, and so they would often you know, drop stuff and that stuff eventually becomes a part of the archeological record. And so here we have a couple of trolley tokens. I'll just pull one out. There used to be an electric rail railway that connected the city of Alexandria to Mount Vernon. Um, and that was disused in the 1930s when the George Washington Memorial Parkway was built. And so we found some of these trolley tokens. This would have been used to get access to the trolley uh, to come to Mount Vernon. And so hopefully whoever dropped these uh, was able to get back to Alexandria since they obviously did not have their, their tokens with them. This is a lipstick tube, a very small lipstick tube, probably turn of the century. This is kind of our unofficial mascot in Mount Vernon archeology, span but that's a little plastic Gumby that we found uh, in our excavation site at the South Grove Midden. Another guy we just found uh, a few weeks ago, a uh, little Civil War soldier. So, I always get a big kick out of finding that stuff. Uh, but it really just goes to show from the Native American artifacts through the Washington period all the way to the present day, we have a huge range of occupation here and all of it's important and all of it tells a, a very special story. And so um, that's pretty much it for this uh, walkthrough of artifacts from the archeology span here at Mount Vernon.